So this week we're going to talk about the Molex connector. Molex connectors look something like this, and they're used in all kinds of different areas. They most commonly are used in, or used to be used in computers, automotive, uh, even medical devices. So I have fond memories of actually opening up my first computer and seeing a bunch of these Molex connections. I didn't know what they did at the time, but uh, often they're used to supply power, like this type of connector, but they could be used for other things as well. All right, so we're gonna show you how to crimp a Molex connection using crimpers, how to pin and depin the Molex connection. I'll show you how to depin the Molex connector using a pair of tweezers and believe it or not, some staples that you might have lying around as a last resort. I'll put the tools to everything I'm using in the comments. So if you wanna get the same tools, Kripper, you can. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Okay, so if you are going to start installing a Molex connection, usually what you're gonna have is you're gonna have uh, to order a set of both male and female uh, housings. And also these are the actual pins and you'll notice there's a, a male version, which I'll try to get close up there, the female version, right? So those are two different connections, each going uh, into different housings. And obviously there's other types of Molec connectors out there. I'm just showing you some example ones, uh, but there's all sorts of different branded Molex connections. Here's an example of a smaller Molex connector used for a servo motor. And it really depends on your application, what you're using it for. But you, one thing you'll notice in a lot of electronics is that as electronics have gotten smaller and smaller, Molex has accommodated that by creating smaller and smaller micro and nano style fittings that they use to get into those smaller electronics. Okay, so the first step that you need to do is you actually need to, you know, assuming you have a wire, typically it's not gonna be prepped and ready to go. Maybe it has some other connection on it. Maybe it's broken off from another Molex connector, whatever it is. So you're going to have to prepare that wire. So let's go ahead and cut this off. And then we are going to strip the wires. So obviously I have this wire stripping tool right here. Um, there's different types of tools out there. I don't particularly care for this one, but it does the job. So you got to make sure you line that up in the correct. And you want to take out about 2.5 millimeters off the insulation or about three thirty seconds of an inch. It's probably a little much, but not bad. All right. So um, if you have really small wires, one thing you can do is you can actually bend them over. This one's not quite enough to do that, but if you have really small wires, sometimes you cut a little bit longer and you can bend them back. In this case, I'm just going to give these a little twist right there. Um, and that helps just a bit when we're making connection. So make sure you leave off a little wire. And the reason is, and I'm going to show you why, why we do that, is when we use our connector. I'm going to use the male pin, but it doesn't much matter. The assembly is pretty much the same. So you want to clear what, get one of those off. So we have our male pin. And what you have here is you have a couple different tabs that you can see. So you have a couple different tabs here. You have this tab right here that I'm pointing to with the screwdriver. That tab is going to go over the insulation of your wire. So those two tabs right there, what they're going to do is they're essentially going to get curled over onto the insulation of your wire. So they're kind of going to pinch it on both sides. And I'll show you a close-up of that later. And then also you have these two tabs here. And those are what is actually going to make electrical contact with your conductor. All right. So when you put your wire in, you got to be careful and understand where you're putting the wire. So... When you place this in, you can see my, uh, I got the wrong side here. I didn't prep that side. So when you're putting the wire in, you want to get it so that the, and I, as I said before, it's a little big. The, uh, my wire is a little big, so I'm probably going to trim that up a bit. Let's see if I can get that real good. All right, so you want, you want the, the two, the larger tabs to only go on the insulation. And as it is right now, if I were to crimp this, it would go on the electrical, it would go on the conductor as well. So let's take off a little bit of that conductive wire. 
I'll try this again here. So right now I set this in here. That's what I'm looking for. I want the, the yellow insulation to fit right in there. And I want those other two tabs in the middle that are going to get crimped over my conductor. Um, so that's how you want to have it set in there. And then what you're going to need is a type of crimping tool. Okay, so there's different types of crimping tools out there. You need one specific to the pin gauges that you're using. So whenever you buy Molex pin, just be aware of what kind of gauge you're dealing with. Um, and there's obviously a common chart and things you can look up for those gauges. So once you have your wire crimping tool, right, now you have to use that to crimp those tabs on your pin here. So I'm just going to show you without the wire at first so you can kind of see what goes on, right? So you have the tabs and they're going to get bent, right? Just kind of slowly. Uh, that fell away from me a little bit, but you get the idea there, right? It's going to crimp over the wire like that. And then you got to come back in for the same thing on the other one. Now, normally when you're doing this with the actual wire in there, you're going to want to do crimp the electrical connection first and then crimp the insulation. So the way I like to do this is I like to first put the pin in the crimper get it in the right position, make sure that the larger tabs are flush against the crimper. And then I'm gonna insert the wire, make sure everything lines up and then crimp down on that conductor. You wanna crimp down on the conductor first so that you make sure you make a good electrical connection, make sure that's secure. And then once you've uh, established that the electrical connection is made, then you're gonna crimp down on the wire insulation. You wanna make sure and check that the the rest of the pin is still intact hasn't been deformed in any way and one of the great things is when you crimp something what you're actually doing is you're uh, you're you're actually strengthening that material so it might feel kind of flimsy at first but you're performing something called strain hardening on that metal and so it actually becomes stronger become has a higher yield stress as you do that and it increases it, it takes more effort to actually deform it again. Here's an example of something that can happen as you're doing this. You see I've actually bent the housing here and that's very likely going to cause problems if I try to insert that into the housing. The thing you can do is if you find yourself uh, struggling to clear the crimper um, with these tabs here, the uh, the spring tabs, what you can do is you can just give this a little bend. It's a little too far, but a little bend so that it helps clear the crimper a little bit. And I'll exaggerate that for now, but that's it's too much. Um, which is a little bit can sometimes help you clear that crimper. Okay, now let's actually talk about how to get the pin into the housing. It's a pretty simple process. Um, you just got to make sure the spring tabs are aligned in the correct position, orientation, and then you're going to push the pin into the housing. What can be a little tough is if it's getting stuck, if you don't have a really big, uh, if your wire gauge is, is kind of flimsy, what's going to happen is you're going to have to have trouble getting it in there. You might use a screwdriver or a little pin just to help poke those tabs into their appropriate position so that they lock into place, which is what I did right there. Once you, once you get it in there, you should hear a little click and it'll be nice and secure when you, when you pull test it. So if you want to de-pin or take out the pin from a Molex connector, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can go online, buy a de-pinning tool, um, and you can use one of those. I'm going to show you two methods that you can use if you don't have a deep pinning tool and you want to save the money. You don't do this very frequently, but if you're going to do this frequently, it may be worthwhile investing in the deep pinning tool. So if you ha have a pair of tweezers and they need to be very, very fine tweezers, these are the tweezers I used to use to pick up uh, atomic force microscope tips. So they're like really small, uh, but if you have a 
pair of really fine tweezers. Maybe you need to raid your wife's cosmetic drawer. Um, be very careful. That may uh, endanger your life. But get a pair of really fine tweezers. And what you need to do is you're going to actually um, put them into the housing. And you want to make sure you get around the pin on both sides. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide the tips of those tweezers. Sometimes it takes a little force um, on the tabs, those spring tabs that are on the pins. So once you get that pretty good in there, and you can see I've covered those spring tabs with my tweezers. And there you go. Now you should be able to put that back in if you want and reuse this housing uh, quite a few times before you need to worry about that. Okay, I got one more way. If you don't have a pair of tweezers that are small enough to get in there that you can depin this. Okay, so once again, I put back in the pin into the housing there. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some staples that you have lying around Take them and straighten them out. You only really need to straighten out one side usually. And you want to make sure they're pretty stiff. The stiffer the better. Um, obviously you want them to be small enough to fit in between the housing and the spring tab. You also want them to be stiff. So, all right, let's go ahead and... So you want to push down on the one tab. You want to come in on the other side. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get those to fit in together. So once you get those in far enough on both sides, you want to make sure you're able to push the spring on both sides. Once we get them in nice and secure, you can see it'll come right up. It can be a little finicky. You've got to play around with it um, and work both of those staples in at the same time. You don't want to work one in too far or else you won't probably be able to get the other one in. But it is an option. And it'll save you from getting, you know, and this is a perfectly viable way if you just need to do this once every blue moon. But obviously if, if you're gonna be doing this frequently, you probably want to invest in a tool that'll help you do it quickly and easily. I hope that video was helpful. Please like and subscribe if it was. If not, I might tell your significant other that you took their cosmetic tweezers.